applications for HVAC systems. So that's a interesting one right there. I don't know the total um, process of that, but it sounds interesting and something that might come in pretty handy right now. It's a ultraviolet light that which will disinfect um, various <laughs> uh, germs, et cetera, through the HVAC system. I'm not quite sure the total techn technology of that, but we're pursuing it. Um, let's see. Um, so beyond that, um, last I have been aware of is that the Board of Health is going to reevaluate the uh, page you throw at their new November meeting. But other than that, the transfer station continues to function successfully. And that's really all I have for right now. Great, thanks, Mark. Any questions for Department of Public Works? Any hands raised? Uh, Hillary has her hand raised. She forgot one thing, and then Helen is after Hillary. Great, good, Hillary. So I was just going to add in about the pay as you throw. I'm glad Mark covered that because that was the one thing I remembered after I was done talking. <laughs> we are not going to require bags until at least our November meeting. The Board of Health will meet again on November 18th. Um, in the afternoon to talk about the pay as you throw bag requirement again. And we have asked that Mark and Mike um, from the transfer station come and talk with the board so we can gather more information um, on the best way to proceed forward. So thank you. Thank you, Elle. Okay, Helen is next. Um, am I unmuted? Yes, thank you. Um, I have a question about that. So when um, at some point the select board and everybody else know about the pay as you throw money damage, I can't talk English this morning, wonderful. Um, what I mean is how much less money do we have because we haven't been doing pay as you throw for the last X number of months? Uh, as compared to last year. I would really like those numbers at some point. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, Rebecca, any other questions? Unless Mark can answer that today, which I assume. Um, sure. Um, so we are, that's currently what uh, we are working on right now, trying to gather all of those figures plus the moving target uh, target of uh, recycling costs right now, combine all of that and um, what our revenues are right now and what um, our costs are and trying to put that all into a, pa uh, a package so that it's easier to determine where, to, where we wanna go from, from this point forward, including pay as you throw. Okay, great, thanks. We also have to move on, Rebecca, from Public Works. You're good to go. Great, thanks. Next on the agenda, community services. Uh, Suzanne Thomas is out today and an update from them. Uh, they had uh, a flu shot clinic last Friday afternoon, a drive through which was very successful. 207 flu shots, um, 50 males uh, still going out every Friday um, with their program. The building is open eight to four uh, by appointment for the public. So uh, they just wanted to pass those updates along this morning from the Council on Aging. Um, next is uh, Becky, I saw you on there from the recreation. She was on here, but I don't see her now. Mm -mm. Okay, if she pops back on, I know there's a up oh, there. She oh, is. here she is. Hold on one sec. I won't take your thunder away. Go ahead, Becky. Um, can you hear me now, Chief? We okay. got you. Good morning, everybody. I have a few updates from the Recreation Department. Um, fall programming began the week of September 21st with over 76 children participating in seven different activities divided into 17 small group time blocks. Um, activities range from soccer and basketball skills and drills to camp games, arts and crafts, tennis and yoga. 
Um, there is something for everyone as the department seeks to utilize the excellent Bakersfield to offer as many outdoor recreational opportunities as possible within the safety guidelines um, issued by state and local levels. Um, it is great to see the kids able to enjoy the beautiful fall weather while participating in activities with their friends. Um, in addition to our year round uh, residents, we have had the pleasure of welcoming the many families that own second homes and have chosen to stay in Wellfleet throughout the fall. Uh, many thanks to the health department and the DPW for supporting us in this effort. Um, big thanks to Wellfleet residents and high school students that are sharing their talents to help staff with this after school programming. Um, the abundance of talent and generosity present in our community never cease to inspire and amaze me. Um, the 20, 20th annual Shuck and Run 5K road race is being held virtually this year um, through the month of October. Runners will have until October 31st to run a 5K and submit their times. Um, all entrants will receive a 2020 race shirt with artwork done by Wellfleet artist extraordinaire Alan LeBeau. Um, the playground, skateboard park, tennis, and pickleball courts continue to be heavily used. The rec department continues to monitor the area, explaining the rules, handing out masks, and making sure there is plenty of hand sanitizer. Uh, a modified Halloween celebration will take place, live ha Halloween uh, celebration will take place on October 31st in small group, socially distant activity sessions where children will be able to show off their costumes, participate in spooky dancing and distance Halloween games and receive a goodie bag. Pre-registration is required for this um, activity. The sign up link is located on the Town of Wellfleet website. Um, lastly, I just wanted to mention the department is working with Nauset Middle School to set up a once a week study pod for Wellfleet students whose parents work during the day. So that should be up and running within a few weeks and we'll have the details posted on the town website as soon as we know exactly what's happening with that. So um, that's that's it from the rec department. Thank you, Chief. Great, thanks, Becky. It's it's great to see the kids back out at the park, back in school. Um, it's it's been a long haul, so it's uh, good to see. And, and you guys are doing a great job down there, keeping everybody safe. Thank you, Chief. Any questions, Rebecca, for recreation? Nope, I don't see anyone with their hand up. Okay, great. We'll move over to the library. Uh, the director there, Jennifer for an update from the library. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, good morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so we are still here doing our curbside services. We have, um, sorry about that. We have um, uh, served uh, uh, about 4,500 different patrons um, uh, via our curbside services. And we're working towards our next phase of um, uh, services now, which we're calling grab and go, which will allow some limited access to the building. We are not sure yet when that is going to begin. We are doing it in tandem with the other libraries out here on the Outer Cape. Um, and um, we're working towards a plan to make that happen. It will be um, limited in times in terms of days of the week, as well as time in the building um, and as well as services we can offer. Um, and we will definitely be doing a lot of publicity around it when we, when we uh, are able to firm up when it's beginning and um, what it will look like um, but we want to move slow and cautiously and make sure that we're being safe and make sure that we are offering uh, the, the community the best possible services that we can offer while keeping everybody's safety in mind. Okay, great. Thank you. Any questions for the library? Nope, I don't have any hands raised. Okay, great. I believe I saw Nancy Savetta come online earlier if she has an update from the shellfish. You did. Hang on one second. I'll unmute her. 
You're all set, Nancy. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, so let's see. We have, as of um, October 1st, we had um, all of the basically anywhere from, Lieutenant, um, from the Breakwater, South, Indian Neck, Blackfish Creek, Lieutenant Island, all those areas opened up seven days a week to recreational shellfishers, shellfishermen. Um, and so it has been very, very busy all over town. I think that just the, again, it's what I've said since the beginning and we're seeing it play out still. We've sold less permits, but the permits that we have sold are getting used a lot more um, weekly in many cases. And um, so it's busy out there for the wrecks. It's very hard to stay on top of because it's still just us. Um, but that's uh, a positive because people are out there getting their own food and they're able to social distance and you know enjoy the beauties of this town. So it's, it's a wonderful experience that we're able to offer and we're proud of that. Uh, on the other hand, the commercial uh, shellfishing community is still under significant strain. Um, oyster markets, we're okay this summer, nothing to speak of. Um, doing our grant inspections over the course of the summer, many uh, farmers told us they had yet to sell an oyster. So we're still quite concerned and uh, I'm very grateful to town meeting and uh, the select board and the shellfish advisory board for approving um, up to $10,000 of our uh, propagation revolving fund to be spent for COVID relief efforts. And uh, we have a, a grant that just came out um, from Barnesville County. So we will put together a proposal and request some county matching funds uh, to be able to perhaps buy some oysters from farmers um, and other initiatives like that, just to help mitigate some of the lack of uh, revenue that, that people are facing. Um, the wild fishery, uh, as of today, there's no more Vibrio rules. So it went from, you know, a handful of people to, you know, everybody and his brother was out commercially today. So it's, in a way, you know, that's, it's pretty significant the, the, how much uh, the Oyster Vibrio control plan um, takes it, puts a damper on the wild fishery in the summer. And plus just given the COVID markets this year were so low, um, but it was really good today. We had a very, very busy tide, both recreationally and commercially. So um, that's encouraging. And it seems like there's still good markets, um, some good markets for quahogs. Um, so, th so that's encouraging, but um, you know, we continue to be concerned about the fall and the winter for this segment of our community, especially given that it's, uh, you know, kind of the economic engine of our town in a year round sense. So we are going to continue to pursue um, ideas for how we might be able to help them and certainly spread information about um, support services that are available to the shellfishing community. But that's about it. Great, thanks, Nancy. Uh, any questions for shellfish? Nope, I don't have any hands raised. Okay, and we can always circle Thank back you. to people. If there are other questions uh, that come up <clears throat> before the end of the meeting. Okay. Um, next on the agenda, Captain Capello over at the fire department. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, at this point, uh, we do not have anything to report other than. Um, Unfortunately, we will not be hosting the trunk or treat due to COVID-19 this year um, and all of other activities such as the Christmas party and whatnot. Uh, all, all is a go with us. Uh, we're, we're treating everybody uh, the best we can, protecting ourselves the best we can, as well as everybody else out there. Okay, great. Uh, anybody for fire, any questions? Nope, I got nothing. Okay, great. Next on the list, uh, police. Again, just echoing what the captain said. Uh, you know, it's it's a tough year, and again, some of our events into the fall and winter, especially our kids' Christmas party, uh, will be canceled this year. Um, we will be helping Becky uh, down at the um, more modified Halloween event uh, down at the uh, at the pier this year. But again, it, it's it's a different year and. You know, our heart goes out for these events and, and we are hoping next year. Um, I know this past weekend, which is typically Oyster Fest, which we are overwhelmed by. It was a very eerily quiet weekend um, and one that's been on my calendar for 19 years to work. So um, just want to put it out there that we are getting through this and, and hopefully get on the other side of this. As far as PPE gear for your first responders in schools, we are looking good. 
back uh, a few months ago, MEMA um, deployed 6,000 pieces for the town of Wellfleet, goggles, face shields, masks, which are being used by town departments and election workers to keep everybody safe along with the school. Um, they are available to us if we need to get more gear for town. So I think we feel coming into the, the winter season with a, a potential spike in place, we are in a good position um, with the town right now. A reminder, uh, our group of volunteers, the Wellfleet Well Line is still up and running. Uh, a bunch of volunteers within the community from the, uh, the medical community and mental health community are still staffing a line, um, you know, in case people just want to chat, talk about what's going on through these uh, tough times and, and definitely anxiety filled times. So it's a great resource. And they also do a Zoom meeting on Mondays from three to four. So kind of a group setting. And they do have a social media site. It is on the town's website and it is on our Facebook pages. So I just always like to just give a shout out to them for their hard work, all volunteer, you know, not associated with government at all. So we, we thank them for those, that service. Um, an emergency management update, we've been submitting rounds of um, reimbursement funding for COVID spending, which the town has been incurring since March. We have made one round of requests to the state. A second will go in in November. And most recently, an application to FEMA went in. So we are we are doing our best, uh, your team here, to get some of, if not a good portion of this money back um, to cover COVID expenses. Uh, it was not budgeted, obviously, and was sprung on many of us or all of us unexpectedly. So we are working on that through state and federal officials. And just if you can see in the video here this month, our department again is participating in Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So you may see around town, our patches uh, are pink this month. And we've been participating in that over the years. And we are looking to do autism in April and have patches made up for the department. And it brings awareness um, to each of these uh, causes and, you know, to make donations and, and, and move the um, the causes forward. So that is it on the police side. Again, we thank everybody. It was a, a tough summer. We got through it. Um, we're seeing a lot less calls on, um, I guess you could say public confrontations. I think mask wearing is just becoming second nature now. And we thank the public for that. The, uh, the park down at Mayo beach has been great. Uh, it's been no issues with recreation there. So we just want to Thank the public with that. It hasn't been easy, but the, I think the compliance has been overwhelming. So next on the agenda, we will move on to administration this morning and uh, our town administrator. Any updates, uh, Maria? Helen Miranda Wilson has her hand up if you want to do that before Maria speaks. Sorry, I just realized uh, any questions for the police because I'm running the meeting. I can gloss over that and move it forward. Okay, yeah. Helen's unmuted. Yeah, Chief, thank you. This is a question for your department. Um, so before we meet again, because we're only meeting once a month, um, there will be a large election held here. And I was wondering if there are gonna be any special protocols for this election, you know, in terms of the polls, or if it's just gonna be, you know, business as usual. Uh, I know many people have voted ahead of time. But do you have any words to say about the election and what the department will be doing in relation to that? Thank you. Well, I Thank you, actually, I appreciate that. I, I didn't actually put that on the list because we're only meeting once a month. There's been a lot of guidance from both state and federal um, on the upcoming election and some possible potential issues. So right now we will be handling election day um, as usual, we will have a detail officer on site at the polling site, and we will have a, additional staff patrols uh, in, you know, within the area to, just to give any assistance. That week, we have, um, we've canceled out-of-town details so that I can have staff on standby um, in the event. More than likely, what's going to end up happening is any events or any issues that arise are going to be last minute unless planned a day or two ahead of time. So, this past few months, we have had a few events that have have um, 
have been pre-planned and have come up throughout town and we have dealt with the, the groups um, successfully and peacefully. So I, I anticipate the same. There are some other Cape communities concerned about some events that may be held that will overwhelm their department. So we do have a mutual aid pact around the Cape, whether we need to deploy some officers to other communities or those communities come to Wallfleet. So it is something we are keeping an eye on. The Cape Chiefs are monitoring and uh, Boston has a intelligence center that they send out daily briefings. So um, we will stay on top of it and update the public as needed uh, as we get closer. Any other questions, Rebecca? Nope, you're good. Okay, good. Uh, good morning, Maria. Good morning. <clears throat> I don't really have anything new. You know, I think um, Chief did a good job of sort of talking a little bit about um, where we are with the spending related to COVID and, you know, everybody's sort of having to monitor what happens there because there's, there's no real guarantees on, on what will get reimbursed and, and what won't. Um, so I don't, I don't have anything new that hasn't already been said. Thank you. Okay, great. And just a, an update town hall, um, just being reopened with by appointment, I believe. So we're, we're still by appointment. Um, although, you know, there are some folks coming in, uh, for early voting. Um, certainly their, their access to all the other offices is, uh, not open. You know, we're staying by appointment only, um, you know, the health department did come through. We already, I think, discussed this at the last council meeting or last board meeting, but, um, you know, looking at some minor changes just to make things um, more comfortable for folks if they're um, going to be working in town hall so that we have um, better separation between people and, um, you know, not shared, shared copiers and a few things like that. Okay, great. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, Mike Travato, any updates or anything? I hang on. Let me unmute him. Oop, there you go. Uh, no, uh, no, no COVID-related updates uh, at this time, Chief. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, Mike. I'm um, just wrapping up on the agenda before final questions. Any select board members? Um, and Rebecca, I only have a few on here, if you mind just going around and checking in with each of them. Sure. Uh, Helen's first, if she has any questions, I can unmute her. This is obliquely related to COVID um, because we had to do a whole new thing with the budget, which created a situation where we may or may not need to do short-term borrowing. And I just wanted to bring up the fact that we should probably have voted on whether to do that or not at our last meeting, in my opinion. And I'm hoping that working with the finance committee and the town administrator and whatever exists in terms of our accounting department that we figure out whether or not we're gonna need a special meeting before our next select board meeting about that. At the very least, we need it on our agenda because we're not gonna start getting money in from the tax bills, I think, in time. In any case, this is COVID related because we wouldn't be in this situation if we hadn't had to put off town meeting. I'm just saying, okay, thank you. Rebecca, if you could just unmute Maria, please. Yep. No, she muted. There you go. Thank there you. you. Um, yeah, glad, happy to respond to that. So um, obviously, um, we're spending a lot of effort in um, paying really close attention to those numbers. Um, you know, we thought it important to bring that to the Board of Selectmen um, when we were realizing that, you know, the shortfall was going to come through. Um, we have in the past week had a big payment from um, the hotel tax or hotel motel tax, room tax, um, and it does not look like we are going to need to do any short-term borrowing. Um, but it is our intention 
to do an update for the Board of Selectmen at the Tuesday meeting so that everybody can hear it. But right now it's not looking like we are going to need to do any short-term borrowing. So we, um, we have uh, been working very closely with our financial advisors um, and we are keenly aware of at what town um, at what select board meeting we would have needed to bring forward the request to make uh, for short term borrowing. So, you know, we're, we are paying very close attention to those timelines, but right now it's not looking like we need to do any short term borrowing, but we will make sure that the full board has an update on that on Tuesday. Uh, okay, Chief, I have Janet Reinhart with her hand up. I'm going to unmute her. Morning, Janet. Morning, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you because here we are mid to end of October. Actually, Halloween is going to happen a little bit. And I think um, our town has done an incredible job. And I just want to say thank you to everybody, even everybody who's not, not here. And we've got dredging. So life is good, <laughs> yeah. sort of. Thank you. Great, thanks, Janet. I don't have anyone else from, oh wait, Ryan Curley, hold on one sec, let me unmute him. Um, yes, I, I don't really have anything to add. Um, so thank you. Great, thanks, Ryan. Again, Janet did bring that up. I just want to circle back on the dredging. Uh, I, I believe it still is a 24-7 operation. So uh, we have been getting some nighttime phone calls from very strange places in town with noise and uh, between wind direction uh, and how they're working out in the harbor. It is causing some additional noise at night. So. Uh, if you can just be patient with us, they would, they're trying to get this project done as quickly as possible. Um, so any final questions, Rebecca, or any hands up? I don't see any. Captain Capello, any final words of wisdom? <laughs> this should be brief. <laughs> I always have words. Of, thank you, uh, Chief. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, not at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Great. Great. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and thank Rebecca for filling in for Courtney today. Great job. And we appreciate the help uh, from administration again on supporting this. And the next meeting will be Tuesday, November the 17th. So everybody stay safe.